Since the dawn of the 21st century, scientific discovery has rushed forward at lightning speed. Genetics, physics, computerized technology, robotics, virtual reality. Join Derek and Sharon Gilbert as they uncover the truths behind this ultimate scientific deception. Welcome to Sci Friday. The British Museum is full of... Science! Welcome to Sci Friday. I'm Derek Gilbert. I am Sharon Gilbert. I love that. I want to live there. <laughs> well, yes. Welcome to our studio and welcome to our home. You know what? We are getting very, very close to Christmas, and I know that not everybody wants to celebrate Christmas this time of year. He was prob- Our Lord was probably born in September. The glorious thing is you can say his name all over the place these days, and nobody's going to notice. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to go, ooh, don't want to hear that. Jesus Christ is born. So let's take advantage of the fact that the world is able and, and willing to listen to it. Amen. And say Merry Christmas to Amen. everybody you see. Well, we're taking advantage of a couple of weeks here to uh, three weeks. share with you. Yes. Oh, oh it'll, sorry. Yeah, because it will probably be three by the time we're all done with this. Yeah, um, which will actually air after the, the after, the, after uh, we get January, into the new year. Because we're taking three weeks off yeah. to write. Yes, need to write. The um, uh, trip that we took back in 2019, right after our Israel tour, uh, we took time and spent another week over in the UK. Oh. And uh, if you missed our last program, we talked about in a very condensed form what we saw in uh, England. And uh, now we'll touch on what we saw in the North. The North. Well, but before we went to the North, we, and before we left On our way London, to the North. <laughs> we left out the British Museum, which oh, we yes, could yes, yes. be in there for years. Um, seriously, I could just live in there. But there are a lot of things that we found while we were there that helped with our study, the books that we write, Veneration yep. and Giants, Gods, and Dragons, and the many books you write. So, And we're writing another one together, mm-hmm. so I would love to go back there. I, I highly recommend going to the British Museum. Oh, man. There's so many things. Th- this was really for us. <laughs> get I mean, in a candy so, store. Some people get excited. They go to a concert with their favorite rock singer, country singer, whatever, and that's for them just a squee. That was us. Like, the Sutton Who Helmet. <gasps> oh, they, I, I think it was a replica. The Asher Banner oh, Paul inscription. I <gasps> know. Nabonidus. You know. However, we did not get to see the Mount Hermon star. No. Because that it is was disappointing. hidden away. Yeah. Well, talk about that. This kind of picks up in last week because one of the other historic characters that you bring in besides, and, and you know, besides like Bram Stoker. I mentioned this yes. to somebody. who's like, Bram Stoker's a character. Okay. I'm oh, gonna yes. Start reading it. Um, Sir Charles Warren. Sir Charles Why Warren. Why is he in the uh, Red Wing saga, and what's the connection between him, the Watchers, Mount Hermon, and Jack the Ripper? Well, I know it's crazy, <laughs> isn't it? Well, when I was researching, to I try to put as much historical fact in as I can. And Sir Charles Warren, I had to look at him because he was commissioner of, uh, of the police, the Metropolitan Police at the time. And he also had been a soldier. He was an engineer. And the Palestine Exploration Fund, I discovered, had sponsored an ex- uh, exploration a trip for him to survey parts of Egypt, parts of Palestine. They called it the Levant at the time. Um, he went to Mount Hermon. He measured the height of the mountain. He, he found Khaza Antar, mm-hmm. which is the world's highest ancient Pagan ancient temple. Well, to this day, it's still the highest to, man-made place of worship on to earth. To this day, yeah. and the UN is in charge of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. But he also discovered a circular formation that sort of mimics the threshing floor. Yeah, kind of a spiral form that when mm-hmm. you approach the summit, you have to approach with the summit on your left-hand side. In other words, you're circling it in a counterclockwise mm-hmm. fashion. Exactly. You're forced to. And when you get to the middle, there's a scooped-out area. hmm which is probably for a libation ceremony. Right. That was the belief of the scholar who, um, who translated one of the, the thing that, that Sir Charles found inside mm-hmm. the, the temple, Kasser Antar. Yeah. I would also argue that that location is an ove. The fact that you've got a scooped out area, mm-hmm. that represents the portal to the underworld. Yeah. So it allows you to talk to supposedly the ancestors, but we know they're not. They are demons who are answering. Yeah. That was um, 
startling. It was startling, but while he was there, he discovered this stone mm -hmm. that it was one foot thick, uh, four feet tall, I mm -hmm. think, and it had a proto-Greek inscription on it, an right. ancient Greek inscription that some are still trying to really translate even today. It appears to reference the watchers because if you translate it, it essentially says, are you finding it? Yeah, I'm bringing it up right now because there, there's the official translation. All right, we're at, and then there's the one that our good friend has Yeah, translated. Doug Hamp, and I'm bringing that up right now. The, um, the translation by Charles Clermont Gano, who translated it in 1903. And of course, right. in the Red Wings saga, it was unboxed much earlier because Sir Charles Warren got it back to England in 1870. And by the way, it broke on the way down the mountain. Yeah. Broke yeah. in half. Because the thing weighs 6,000 pounds. He shaved it down from a foot thick, 12 inches thick, down to four inches thick. Right. And then that snapped on the way down. But um, according to Clermont Gano, by the order of the God most great and holy, those who take the oath, hence the British Museum, when it was on display about 100 years ago, translated, hence by the order, hence by order of the God, those who do not take the oath. That makes no sense. No, it doesn't. George W. E. Nicholsburg, mm -hmm. who is the uh, world's foremost scholar right. on the Book of Enoch, according to the command of the greatest and holy God, those who take an oath proceed from here. Now, that's a reference to the Watcher, mm -hmm. which Clermont Gano also believed. The two men believed, uh, Nicholsburg and Clermont Gano believed that this is a reference to right. Baal Hermon, who is mentioned once in the Bible. Right. But our good friend Doug Hamp, Dr. Douglas Hamp, who is a pastor in the uh, Denver area, he... Um, pointed out that there were a couple of words that were left off when they translated it. And um, the word bo and batiu are, were just skipped because they couldn't make sense of it. Bo, he believes, is a reference to bull or ox or male cattle. Right. Batiu is a reference to a Sumerian logogram, bad or bat, which references the god, means the god Enlil or Dagon, who are the same entity. Oh, they're also L, and this this is why all of this is in my most recent book, The Second Coming of Saturn. This is a... That's um, included in one of the specials during December and January, by the way. Oh, okay. Excellent. So the uh, translation Doug pr proposes is this, by order of... Well, let's see if I've, I've got it here. According to the command of the great bull L, this is mm -hmm. how I would render yes. it based on Doug's new information... Uh, because El of the Canaanites, the creator god of the Canaanites, was just Enlil or Dagon by a different name. According to the command of the great bull El, those swearing an oath in this place go forth. Mm -hmm. And the relevance is that El, Enlil, Dagon was just alternate names for Shemiyaza, the chief of the watchers. Oh, we could, we could spend an entire program just talking about this because right. there are lots of ways to interpret that. It was in ancient Greek because more than likely this was Alexander the Great's men right. going through there, and they wanted to leave their um, worship, yeah. because you, you always worship the god of the mountain. What, what's interesting, though, is that... We don't. And, and, no, right. Um, that in our forthcoming book, The Gates of Hell, mm. digging deeper into this, um, I showed research that connect the, the Hivites of the Bible, mentioned in the book of Genesis, uh, to the Mycenaean Greeks. Yeah, And the Mycenaean yes. Greeks, the Hivites, were known to be in the vicinity of Mount Hermon in the days of Joshua because they were oh, the Hivites yes. in the land below, beneath Hermon. Yes. So they were there for a very long time. So it shouldn't be a surprise that Greek speakers knew the story of the Watchers mm -hmm. and the God and who, who told them to mm -hmm. swear an oath and go forth, which is a reference, of course, to the Book of Enoch and the Watchers agreeing to take human wives. So this is really fascinating so stuff. I think it is too. And so the connection to Jack the Ripper. I know the fact that Sir Charles Warren found it, that he brought it, he got permission from the local Pasha, and he brought it back, took it to the B British Museum, and it just sat in a box for years. 33 well, course, years. I know. According to the, yeah, Clermont Gano supposedly translated it in 1903. It had been overlooked for 33 years. And God bless him, Sir Charles Warren was a an engineer. He loved mathematics. Mm -hmm. And my main character is a mathematician, amongst other things. And so the two of them have a conversation about that very stone. Mm -hmm. And it, we won't spoil And numerology. Numerology, yeah. yes. Yeah. And well, we don't believe in it, but sadly, there are some in the world 
even today. Who, who, who do, who and, believe in, and they base their actions accordingly, right? Yes, indeed. So that we was, went... Yeah, that yeah. was the only disappointment of the British Museum. We didn't get to see we the Mount Hermon inscription, the but we know it's there in the storage. We, you you storage. can actually see if you go to the British Museum's website and type in. Uh, I'm not really sure what you have to type in. I'll put it on the lower third here if you want to yeah. take a look at it, but you'll have seen pictures by the time we're talking about this. Oh, I'll yeah. be putting pictures up of that from the British Museum. Exactly. Um, then, then we went to Blenheim, of course, and then mm -hmm. we went down to, we passed Stonehenge. Oh. <laughs> we're driving past and look over, hey, that's Stonehenge, because we were on our way to to see uh, the, the tour, to see Glastonbury tour. Yeah, actually, that was on our way to Gloucester, now that I think about it. I think we passed... On our, we might have been on our way to Gloucester, but on our way to Glastonbury, certainly one of the, one of those places. Yeah, I we, think it was on our way west to Gloucester, but either way, it's oh, like suddenly we just look up and we see Stonehenge. There it like, is. Well, okay, goodbye. Uh, we'll see you another time. Because we wanted to climb Glastonbury Tour. It's right, another right. one of those, why was this here? What does it really mean? Because it's this massive hill mm -hmm. that has a winding path that you have to climb mm -hmm. to get to the top. Yeah. And it's been used by various uh, organizations. And of course, it's yeah. There's an annual music festival there that is. Very, it's a very pagan music it festival is very pagan. as well. Well, the town is very pagan. You look oh, at extreme. the main street, and there are uh, sites it's, that it's like Harry Potterville. There are witches everywhere. Right. And by that I mean men and women who are pretending to be witches, or it's really like think that they are. Well, but that's the thing. You can be play acting. And still trip your way into being part of the fallen realm. Right, right. So it was, again, as both of us, uh, readers of the Arthurian lore and me digging into the, Arth the history oh, yes. of Arthur, uh, Arthurian period of history. I believe yeah. he was a historic character. We just don't know for sure which of the leaders of the Britons he was. Well, his grave was there. I don't think he's actually buried there, but... There no. was this grave. Yeah, yeah, at the uh, the cathedral there, which mm -hmm. uh, the monks in Glastonbury, realizing they needed to fix the roof or something, they needed money for something, they, hey, we found Arthur's grave, and suddenly you had pilgrims from all over Britain coming to pay, mm -hmm. uh, you know, pay their respects and pay and, the monks. And pay that, exactly. But, uh, so we did get our picture taken there for that, but um, no, that that's not where the historic Arthur was, uh, was buried. Uh, but an interesting view from the tour, which rises above... The, the plane there in the it town does. of Glastonbury, like it a uh, like a lone sentinel in the midst of well, there you've the got landscape. this you've got this large hill which is very much what you would have representative in the ancient times that this is where you go to worship the god mm -hmm. you go up to the a high hill. place the high place exactly but there was also a sacred spirit spring a sacred well right 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 what was the story that it came out red because it was believed to be um, the blood of something, I, th you know, would yeah. have to. What? Actually, um, it was because of iron oxide. That's in the really water what's is causing what really the discoloration. Causing right. But yes, uh, a lot of people go there to be healed. They will buy containers mm -hmm. or bring their own, mm -hmm. and then they will pay to, you know, give an offering so that they can take some of the water with them. Yeah, it was. It was really an odd. It was an that odd. That little garden was that was really an odd. It was feeling. like a grotto. Yes, yes. Yeah, it was very, very strange. But from there, we went to the north, which means Scotland. Well, we, we also visited Pendragon Castle. Oh, we did. We'll have to talk about that when we On come back. On our way the, to the north, and we'll tell you about that in a second. You have blessed us with your support during our first year in ministry. You literally make it possible for us to do what we do. And so as we prepare to head into a new year, we want to return the blessing to you. Through January, we've prepared a number of special offers at the Gilbert House store, and we're featuring The Red Wing Saga, Sharon's wonderful series of supernatural thrillers that teaches spiritual warfare through masterful storytelling with fascinating historical mysteries as the backdrop. Now, all eight novels in The Red Wing Saga, a $160 value, can be yours for just $110, a savings of $50. You'll also find the Derek Gilbert Collection, all five of my nonfiction books, a $100 value for just $70. Those are just two of the special offers available through January at our online store. You'll find it at gilberthouse.org slash store. And as always, we thank you for your prayers and your support.
Welcome back to Sci Friday. I'm Derek Gilbert. I am Sharon Gilbert, and you can tell that I am really, really excited <laughs> about just that trip meant so much mm-hmm. to me. That was the, thank you for for letting us go there. Oh my goodness, that was that was a delight to see the things that had fired your imagination and now turn into these eight novels. And I uh, well, here's another thing I discovered while I was trying to research Carlisle. Because that's where I put the main character's birthplace. Okay. It's called Rose House. Mm -hmm. And Carlisle is almost to Scotland. Yeah. It's part of the north. Um, But it's a beautiful area. But I discovered in my research, because I wanted to place it by the Eden River. Ah, okay. And I found this little town that was perfect, Kirkby Stephen. Kirkby Stephen. And not far from Kirkby Stephen is a place called Pendragon Castle. Now, Pen- it's just yeah. below this big overlook, overlooking the Valley of the Eden River. Now, the Arthurian story, uh, in, in the story, he is the son of Uther Pendragon. Mm-hmm. And Pendragon is just, uh, means head dragon. He's it's, like the chief, he's like the high chief head of the Head dragon, Britons. or some, it can be translated head of the dragon. Oh, okay. Yeah. But he's usually connected. Uther is usually connected to Cornwall. Yes, very much so. But uh, there was a tribe that sort of populated Cornwall, and some of them went up to the Carlisle region, Mm, and they took it over. And so that is why there are some in Carlisle to this day who will tell you that that was where the Arthur legend actually took place. Yeah, Arthur, well, (laughs) it's like George Washington slept here. Arthur slept all over Britain. he's everywhere. But Pendragon Castle was really a fascinating place. It is a ruin now, but you can still access it. You can, and the legend is that uh, Uther Pendragon's men all died there because someone poisoned the well. Oh. So it's supposedly haunted. Hmm. But I will tell you this. We weren't haunted by spirits while we were walking through there. There was a raven nest of all things because ravens play a big part representing the fallen realm in the Red Wing Saga. And there was... <laughs> You know, sort of yelling at us. Mm-hmm. They weren't very happy that we were invading their space. No, yeah, in, not in a at all. Spot like a little niche in in one of the the walls. And and opposite the niche, I kid you not, Juan discovered this mm-hmm. was a broken mirror. Mirrors oh. are all over the Red Wing Saga, so ravens and mirrors right there now, at now, Pendragon why mirrors? Castle. Well, mirrors are a gateway. Uh, any reflective surface is a gateway. A pool of water is Mm -hmm. a gateway. Okay, hence the practice of scrying. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, I I use mirrors, especially obsidian mirrors. Obsidian is a volcanic product, Mm -hmm. and it is thought to have special properties in the pagan world that it gives you extra access. It's like a a super mirror. Mm -hmm. John Dee had one. Okay. He used it for seeing the future. Hmm. So the mirror and the ravens at Pendragon Castle, yes. Kirkby Stephen, a wonderful little place. We saw a little um, uh, church there, an ancient church. With Cute some, little uh, church. We went to stay at a pub there. Mm-hmm. So it was a beautiful little place to stay. Nice, nice people. Uh, but they were having a, uh, a the, there were a lot of travelers, gypsies, who were having a horse show. Yes, yes. So the place was just really, they were just starting to arrive. It was a little bit tricky to uh, get in and out, but we managed. Yes. And from there, we finally made our way to... The North! Yes. Uh, Glen Coe in Scotland. Beautiful place. I've never seen Scotland, and the pictures don't do it justice. It's no. like anywhere you go, That that's a beautiful landscape. When you see it and you get the 160 degree view or whatever that you get and you're surrounded yes. by it, it's not the same as seeing it. It's not the same. It's a little in, in valley a amongst all of these mountains. And one of the biggest mountains in, in the United Kingdom is Ben Nevis. And that this is right opposite. So you could see this beautiful mountain like almost a, a presence before you, but there were other smaller ones around. And that is where I set Briarcliff Castle, which is the home of the Stuart family. Mm, mm-hmm. And Paul Stuart, the Aubrey Earls, all lived there, and, and uh, that's their uh, country home, if you want to put it, their home base. And so I wanted to have a very scenic place that was 
part of the, the actual highlands, but not quite into it. You have to cross over and get into uh, Fort William and on a little bit further north to be in the legitimate Highland Highlands, mm-hmm. which is uh, almost like being in the Ozarks, but not quite. The Ozarks aren't quite as mountainous as the no, Highlands of Scotland. We don't wear the We're guys sort of don't a high wear, plateau, and the guys here generally they, don't wear they, kilts. They have the beards, but they don't have the kilts. <laughs> yes. But yes, we went there. It is beautiful, and I chose Glencoe partly because of its history. It was has this very dark history regarding, I think it's the McDonald's and the Campbells. McDonald's and the Campbells, the massacre of Glencoe yes. in 1692, February 13th. Yeah, they were tricked. Mm. into housing the uh, the McDonald clan, I think. Well, the McDonald's were, were the ones who were, were killed murdered. by so Scottish government the, forces, the Campbells. It was the, the Campbells. Campbells then who came in. Sorry about that. Right. If you are if you live in Scotland and I just got it wrong. But uh, yes, it, it and supposedly, again, haunted. Yeah, yeah. And there was a place where a piper stood to warn everybody. And we found it. It's in a field. Mm-hmm. It took us a while to find it, but we found it and got to stand right on that stone. Yeah, this was a uh, during the the politics of the region. The the McDonalds were slow to swear fealty to King William. But yes, we we loved it there. And from there, we, oh, the the Folk Museum of Glencoe. We have to talk about Jimmy oh, the Bush. Oh, oh, was that there? That was there. Because oh. I remember very clearly, he was talking about how... Oh, that's right. They had a picture of the piper. found the boots of one of the soldiers involved... That's right. ...who had been found. And, and so bear in mind, again, this took place in 1692. So yeah. you're talking more than 300 years old. And they haven't forgotten it. And a pair of boots had been found that belonged to one of the soldiers involved in the massacre of Glencoe. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to donate it to the museum. And Jimmy the Bush, <laughs> so named because of his hair, was incensed... We don't need those. You know, they didn't want them oh. because they still, they've got long memories there. Yes. And Jimmy was an extra in uh, the Highlander movie. He was yes. very proud. He looked at, he showed it to us on YouTube for a 10 second clip. That's me. We saw the Not back of his Not in the head. Highlander movie. Well, it may have been in that one, but he was also in the one with Mel Gibson. Oh, in, in, um, uh, um, Braveheart. Yes, Braveheart. Oh, my goodness. He showed us a picture of himself as still from the scene. And all you could see was his hair and hat. <laughs> but it was him. You could it tell was, by the hair. It, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Such his a, stories a were amazing. Man. And a yes, lovely we man. would go back and, uh, and, and see that. Uh, and spend hours with him yes. listening to his stories. Right. Incredible, yes. No, Loch Lomond was, was a little further north, and that was really important was because beautiful. there's a, a site in Loch Lomond that's used as a grave site by the local clans. Mm, was that the one? I thought that that was actually in Glencoe. Oh, you're right, there's you're right. That was island. Glencoe. I'm yes. sorry. Yeah, uh, Loch Lomond is, is, I'm thinking of the song. I think, yes. <laughs> no, in, in Glencoe, there's a loch there that it's just an inland uh, um, sea, mm-hmm. inland lake that uh, um, has a small island. There are lots of little islands yeah. in these locks. And this one is a graveyard. If you get your uh, um, binoculars out, you can really see all of these mm-hmm. headstones. And there's a church there. Right, right. So it was a place where both clans could bury people. And you didn't, you didn't start fighting Right. There. It was yeah, just for burying desecrate. your dead. Yeah. So, okay. So Loch Lomond was, was, was a separate place. Yeah. They had and a little was town there. It was beautiful. Much larger loch too. Much larger. And yes. Beautiful. We, and beautiful. Margaret went with us, with us when we went right. there. And I can't remember if John and Terry were with us, but yeah, uh, Juan and Margaret, I think it was just Juan and Margaret. Mm-hmm. Boy, it all just kind of go, we need to go back. We do. We so do. So I can get my memories back. I left some of them there. <laughs> but we went to Loch Ness. Oh, yes, yes. Loch Ness is, um, of course, very famous for cryptozoologists because of the Loch Ness Monster or Nessie. But there's a lot more to it than that. There's a lot of history involved there, for one. Yes. But um, the... the, um, (laughs) <laughs> the thing that, that struck us most, and we probably are going to have to take the time to spin out the story on our next episode, because we I don't will. think we'll have time to really tell it We here. won't, because trust me, it gets into a lot of, boy, the Lord worked out a whole lot of interesting visits and uh, uh, new people for us to meet, uh, because it gets into Aleister Crowley and dark magic. Yeah, yeah. He had a home there about 100 years ago. Yeah, we'll uh, talk about that next week. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Loch Lomond was beautiful, uh, Loch Ness. We got to actually take a private 
uh, boat ride on Loch Ness. It worked out that way, and our friend John and Ter- friends John and Terry, John and Terry negotiated a deal with a guy who was just ending his day. Mm-hmm. But while we were there, we'll talk about all that next week, but while we were there, we tried to get an interview with a man who was a, a Nessie hunter, right, and he right. claimed he had DNA. Yeah, and we uh, we knocked on his trailer. He lives in a, in a caravan yeah. by the shore making models of Nessie, which is how he supports himself. And uh, we, we, were gonna, we would have bought some models from him. We just wanted to get a chance to chat with him. Yeah, he would not even open the door. No, he he basically he's like, what? Now I've got an interview in twenty minutes with, uh, with New Zealand. It's like we just just two or three minutes. No, no, not interested. Boom. Okay, well, it was because of that that we were we wound up down the road looking for the home of Alistair Crowley, and that we'll talk about exactly. Next week. Again, the Lord worked all that out because we would have spent quite a bit of time talking to this gentleman because I had told him I said I have a degree in genetics. I would love to talk to you about your findings mm-hmm. regarding DNA and Nessie. Yeah, well, seeing as how that was more than three years ago, we've not seen any big reveal. In no, the genetic world, it strangely doesn't enough, we seem that he really that. had something that was uh, earth shaking, yeah. yeah, paradigm shifting. So, no, probably not. Oh, yes, well. Scotland, what Scotland was incredible, and it features heavily in the Red Wing saga because we have quite a number of, of uh, characters, and they are characters in some cases. Uh, wonderful people that you just love to have scenes where they Duke. James, when he comes in, he is, uh, in the, the story, his castle is closer to Glasgow. Mm-hmm. So he is another Stuart. The Stuarts, and these are Stuarts that actually in my fiction world are inheritors. They have the rights to the crown if they wanted it. Mm. And of course, our main character comes in and turns out that he has even more rights to the crown. Mm-hmm. And that's the whole point. Will he take it? Because yeah. he's been told you have been shaped and formed by the spirit realm to take over as they're actually trying to build the idea of an antichrist in the late 19th century in the Red Wing saga. Um, so the question is, will Charles believe it or not? But at the same time, he's having uh, conversations with loyal angels, mm-hmm. loyal spirits. Yeah. And so we, we really do see spiritual warfare throughout the books. Right, right. That, that's the thing that uh, we've learned over the last few years. We see the word watcher. It's usually applied to those rebels on Mount Hermon. But the fact is there are faithful watchers as well. Mm-hmm. And they are fighting for the king and on our behalf. Amen. Thank you for watching. This is Sci Friday. Sci Friday is a viewer supported outreach of Gilbert House Ministries. Follow us online at SciFriday.tv and GilbertHouse.org. That's where you'll find our weekly Bible study, the Gilbert House Fellowship. Join us each week as we go through the Bible verse by verse in chronological order. We'd love to hear from you. Contact us through our websites or drop us a line at P.O. Box 78, Crane, Missouri 65633.